Hey, Chispa. You want to be part of the video? Wait a second. Oh, no, that's just a shiny. Wait, why can I hear my... Oh, that's right. I'm making a video. Let me get into my distance. Hello. And I'm always amazed that this thing works. That's why I'm taking back every so often. And welcome to the hobo and his something YouTube show about pro wrestling. I'm here to give my review and what I think about pro wrestling. Um, I haven't had the time. I'm just getting over whatever sickness I have or had because everything is coming out of my nose. Really funky looking. Also out of my throat, which is good. You want that stuff to come out. Um, so I haven't had a chance to change anything yet. One day I will. One day I will clean up the house. And one day I'll get cheese for to voluntarily come up here and show her the show off the nice pre nails that I clipped from her yesterday because they were getting rally. But I'm not here to talk about how to clip your cat's nails. And I'm very happy that Twisted Pixie's dog is doing much better. So that's always good to hear. But I'm here to talk about SmackDown. And WWE. Um, again, a little programming note on Tuesday. I'll be going over my my dual predictions for both the Takeover and the Royal Rumble. And then, unfortunately, probably actually, maybe Saturday night, maybe Sunday ish. I'll be able to make my reaction video to NXT TakeOver. I'm, I'm working that night. I won't be able to do much afterwards. So I might make my video then. TakeOvers tend to end relatively quickly. The 27th is the Royal Rumble. I think I'll be able to cover, do a live stream of both the pre-show so far, I'll be wearing my lesson WWE. I'm humbled. I have my little headset to wear. I do cooking and stuff. And then I'll be, do, be doing live streaming the Royal Rumble. Assuming I don't get kicked off or screwing something up on the live stream. Because I had discussions with many people about quality of WWE's copyright software stuff. But enough about that. Wrestling time. Oh, did that wake you up? Can you say hi to everyone? She looks so sleepy. She's just staring at me, saying, when are you going to go to bed, fat bastard? Because, again, this is a little bit of my bedtime. It was my day off, so I did some fun stuff today. We got new shoes. I can do my new shoes dance. A new shoes dance. That's cool. But enough of this nonsense. Utter nonsense. Oh, wait a second. That's, that's what pro wrestling is. Utter nonsense. Oh, also, depending on my work schedule, I might also be making a, another live video about midget wrestling. Yes. And one day I do want to get out and go check out Go Wrestling here in Daytona Beach. Might as well do everything. Especially if I have something to do stuff with. Makes me smile. Enough about that. Twisted Pixie is a very, very nice person. Should take her out more often. But again, Becky Lynch! He's another very, very nice person. Yes! And OMG. Oh my god. Look at that booty on Becky Lynch. That is one rope pose no woman could ever do in boy shorts. Or boyfriend shorts. I guess that's what they call them. No, back in the day, I think they were called Boy shorts. 
for a particular kind of panty. Again, I've already said how I know that. So don't ask me how do I, how do you know that hobo Tom? I have my ways. But oh wow. <laughs> Someone got an eyeful away from the hard cam. Which is normally where I I saw the hard cam side and you'll never see me. They don't want to show hobos. I would have seen a lot of Becky Lynch. Oh, that's the extra zoom. Extra zoom. And Asuka's, and so so Becky Lynch cuts a promo. Asuka comes out, just like Asuka, starts speaking mean Japanese. I have no idea what she's saying. It just sounds mean. Charlotte comes out, and she gets a woo for that black bra of hers. They're getting a little racy nowadays. And a little raciness is good. Not the full-fledged Mandy Rose ballroom thing. I'm glad they're semi doing away with. We shall see. Although I did hear on some other YouTube show, <coughs> even Larson, that it would have been funnier if Jay Uso. He's the non-married one. Whichever one is not married. The single Uso. <laughs> they did a twin switch. <laughs> that that would have been funny. Um, so, so again, uh, this Charlie comes out, she goes, woo! She, she, she should get wooed for that. But, um, then As Asuka jumps Becky, and it's just a brawl. Again, I do like Becky's two-piece. Becky went over, and I think you'll see Dr. Tom come back. He's going to talk about the math. Because, uh, shoot. Oh, good, I didn't rip out those pages. And the math says, you stand tall, you might lose. So we'll see what happens. Again, we'll have more pronounced WWE mathematician, Dr. Tom. Probably on Thursday. Thursday night. And this led us to the first match of the night. Naomi versus Mandy Rose. It was good. Mandy Rose came out first. And she's flanked by Sonya Deville. Mandy Rose has a very gold dust-esque ring entrance, I guess. It's like when you copy um, ring entrances. Like, you will see. I have my... St. Valentine's Day special. Again, because that show goes out. All the ladies. I'll see if I can get some good soundbite for that. I know there's one I really do. I have to figure out how to get it somehow. But Manny Rose comes out and then... Oh, I'm sorry. Naomi comes out first. Yeah, because Naomi's in the ring. Manny Rose comes out second. <laughs> Naomi just... Just shoves Boo Sonya Deville aside and goes right after Mandy on the outside, which is really good. Um, for the most part, first half of the match, um, Naomi again has control of the whole thing. Uh, Sonya Deville kind of distracts Naomi a little bit, and that's when it makes sense that Mandy Rose again gets, gets in her licks. And it was a fun match. Um, Deville's there for the distraction. Um, it was kind of basic. It, it was semi one sided. Again, it's a, it was an okay match. Just the whole storyline idea kind of had me turned off. And the fact that Sonya Deville would actually impact the match. Again, boo Sonya Deville. Boo Sonya Deville. Will always be booed by Hobo Tom. And again, it's just kind of one side to Deville got in, got involved. Naomi lost. I think it was, it was some like, like cheesy roll up thing. So it was a ham sandwich match. And of course, her husband came in the ring to console her. He was like sporting a mohawk. It looked kind of goofy. Then we have a promo. 
Rey Mysterio with that black lit mask looked amazing. Oh, wow. I can't wait for that match. Nor will you get to hear my review on that. Again, no more copyright violations from this guy. Or at least if I do, it's not for a long time. Things get faded in memory. So with this, we have the next match. It's uh, The Miz versus Cesaro. Cesaro is just the beast. Cesaro is so good. The Miz is so good. They These two really bring out the best in their opponents. The Miz busted out the figure four again. Cesaro just knows how to counter-wrestle. Uh, Miz went to the top probably for a double-axe handle. Cesaro hit him with the European uppercut. I mean, it was just a really good wrestling match. In fact, I think I'm going to get back in thinking about it, I'm going to, and I was wavering on this, if it was a really good one match or, or, or just a good other match. Um, again, it's really fun. Uh, Sheamus does get Shane. Shane gets his comeuppance. Uh, eventually, The Miz does eat in from Cesaro. But again, it's a really good match. It's a really good back and forth. Miz gets his, his yes hits in. He got his yes kicks in. He got the drop kick in the corner. Um, Try to be a little bit too adventurous on the top rope. And Cesaro caught him for that. Cesaro's just strong as anything, though. I mean, he could probably bench press me, and, and I'm a fat hobo. So just imagine if he can do that to Miz, just imagine what he could do to me. Again, Cesaro versus Hobo Tom. That would at least be a two-star match. Not because of me, but because of Cesaro. And it was fun. Uh, Shane gets the table ready. You're like, oh, wow. Wait, if Shane does this, that means... Again, we'll get more insight from Dr. Tom on the wrestling math of the situation. But again, after the match, I mean, this match was really fun. It's a really darn good wrestling match. These two cannot put on a bad match. This is a good surf and turf match. But afterwards, Shane gets the table ready to put someone through it. Um, goes up to the top rope. This gets shoved off. The top rope, I think by Sheamus, takes a nasty bump. Where it seemed like he really did his spin on the barricade. So that gets him out. Then, of course, they double-team the Miz. They put the Miz on the table. Shane got ready. Shane needs to learn that, though. That's the wrestling adage. If you get the table ready, you're going through that table. So they put Miz on the table. They picked up Shane, drove Shane through the Miz, through the table. And it was a fun match. Then you have AJ Styles comes out. And Vince McMahon comes out. And it's supposed to be a moderated face-to-face -face by Vince McMahon himself. <laughs> Daniel Bryan is so enjoying himself. Comes out, not in his own merch, but uh, one of those shirts you get if you donate to Save the Rainforest. It looks like something really from the 80s. Like late 80s, early 90s, Save the Rainforest. Donate 10 bucks and get a t-shirt thing. Caleb Bryan's to heal. He heals it up. Falls AJ Styles ignorant. Runs down Shane, runs down Vince McMahon in his economics. How he's how he's a wealth hoarder. Calls himself the planet's champion. <laughs> so you have the universal champion and the planet's champion. And then he quotes Carl Sagan. Wait a second. There's some theme going on here in WWE. Someone's been taking some astronomy classes. I don't know who, but one of the writers probably went back to school, took the easy astronomy class. And astronomy is not that simple, unless it's at a community college, where you can like literally like identify stars. Damn, my astronomy class at college I didn't take. 
It was only once a week. But you had to go to the observatory. It sounded cooler than it actually was. But, again, Florida Community College is not the best. Um, then AJ calls Daniel Bryan fickle. Said, I'm not fickle. You are fickle. Daniel Bryan looks shocked. Yeah, and it was really good. Then AJ Styles starts to chase Daniel Bryan around the ring. Um, he says, you want a face-to-face? -face? I'll give you a face-to-face. -face. He throws him in the ring. Um, Daniel Bryan eventually hits the knee plus on AJ Styles. This will be interesting because Daniel Bryan's tall, but he, but he ran cowardly. Again, Dr. Tom will explain the math a lot better than I can. Then we have Carmella and our truth coming back from the truth church from Sanford at the headquarters. Wow, our truth is a confused human being. Oh. Carmella has big boobies. I can say that. Well, clear conscience. And she is a gatekeeper in Gucci. No one should ever, ever admit in WWE that they're the gatekeeper. So that means you do the job for all the new talent. So that means when Nikki Cross hopefully makes her SmackDown debut. Oh, yeah, she probably will be on SmackDown because she got married to Killian Ding. So it'll be Carmella versus Nikki Cross. And Carmella's going to lose. Again, very predictable. And then Charlotte's back there. Uh, they talk about being in the Royal Rumble. Yeah, whatever. Royal Rumble, the pre-show starts at 5 p.m. Let's see here. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Seven hours of rest. Wow. And it's on the USA. Um, they're going to the U.S. belt on the pre-show, and the cruiserweight belt on the pre-show. That almost makes talk a lot. One rumble, two rumble. The championship. What are they going to do for two hours? Oh, um, I guess tag team? The, the SmackDown tag belt. Oh, then they have the el elimination chamber for the women's tag. So, yeah, that kind of makes sense. And I have to make my whole wrestling card probably Friday. That's the only bad thing about doing this. You have to kind of <laughs> have production and <laughs> do work. With the next match, so with that being said, the next match is Samoa Joe, a rematch. Samoa Joe versus Mustafa Ali. Heard a lot of the hi highlights of it from last week when Samoa Joe just, just murdered Mustafa Ali. But with this, Samoa Joe, he's a striker. He, he's, he just punches people. Ali is amazing. He can do flippy, flippy stuff. And it's some really good stuff. And he can flip from, he can jump from the, the ring to the second rope to the outside. He can go from any of the he can go from any of the ropes. I know he doesn't do the the. I know there was a triple moon salt where a wrestler would go from the bottom rope moon salt, second rope moon salt, top rope moon salt. I haven't seen him do that yet. Although he's one who's very capable of doing that. I mean, it was just amazing. Um, again, Ali he can do the flippy. Joseph's a striker. He just those are some heavy fists he throws. The kicks sound great. However, the clutch, the coquina clutch, also known as the rear naked choke, or more often Joe's been using it like a super hold. Again, coquina clutch is when the, you actually put your other arm behind the guy's head, and it's like a vice. It's like a rear naked choke in MME. A sleeper holds more. You have the, the hand in the front, and you're kind of squeezing and cutting off the crowd artery, where the other is more of a strict choke. There's some facts for you folks out there. So, it's, Coquina Clutch is kind of like that weird hybrid. I think it all depends how Joe wants to use it. So, Samoa Joe won. I'll tell you what, this was another good, fun surf and turf match.
Wow, my videos are getting longer. I'm either getting better at this or I'm talking more. Or it could be that the matches are really good. And so far, so you have two surf and turf matches and a ham sandwich match. That almost makes sense. Again, it was a ham sandwich. I just think that storyline is kind of wonky. The New Day, they're having fun playing pool. They get um, interviewed by Charlie, I guess. And some other guy walks in. They're like, you, you go away. And then the, if the New Day win it, they're going to Freebird. Obviously, whoever gets, whoever, which they're n never going to win. But if they didn't win, they would Freebird it. That is good. And if you don't know what the Freebird rule, rule is, um, in tag team, if you have three people in a tag team, any one of the two can defend the titles where all three kind of hold it. Again, named after the fabulous Freebird of Michael P.S. Hayes, Terry Bam Bam Gordy, and the Gigolo Jimmy Del Rey. Although I think he was like the second version. Or that's the version I'm more familiar with. And again, you can always leave an email and say, How about Tom? What about the original Freebird? Don't you know who that is? Name on your wrestling knowledge. Then leave a comment, or even you can send me an email saying, Don't you know who this person is? Copy and paste me a picture. Again, if you do leave a comment, even if you, if you well, yeah, comment, su subscription, or email, you do get a shout out and a personalized video, even though I just have a few of them. One just for you. And if you're going to be the negative person, there's a gift just for you, too. Again, as long as you say something, you get something in return. Depending on what you say, depends on the video you get or a picture. <laughs> and again, they're having fun. So they might freebird whoever wins, with, which, by the way, they're never winning. Uh, maybe sometime in the future they will, but I don't think they've ever had one part of a tag team win the Royal Rumble. Tag team royal tag team battle royals are different. Not the Royal Rumble. Then we get into the main event of the evening of Rey Mysterio Jr. versus Andrade. What what happened to Stan Almas? I don't like that. I like I like seeing their full names. And Vega's banned from ringside. I mean she's probably off her husband, Alistair Black, somewhere. Again, congratulations to Selena Vega and Alistair Black. Just for that, and I know this is old, but this goes out to you. And Selena Vega is a little too short for me. She's too short for most. But with that being said, this match. I'm still not, I still don't like the fact that they're cutting names. Like, they can call Charlotte, Charlotte Flair. They still call her Becky Lynch. Asuka's always been Asuka. Naomi's always been like Mandy. It's weird, they're very selective about that now that I think about it. Why are they so selective about that? It's just weird. They, well, AJ, still AJ Styles. Randy Orton, still Randy Orton. Samoa Joe. Oh, the crowd just chants Joe, but that's just easier to chant. That's weird. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't know. We'll figure it out, folks. Again, this was an amazing match. If you ever watch any pro wrestling and want to see the whole gambit of what wrestlers can do, oh, my first thing is watch a Rey Mysterio versus Andrade Cien Almas match. It'll show everything. It'll have the great lucha action from Rey Mysterio. It'll be the great striking encounter and the strong style from Andrade Cien Almas. I refuse just to say Andrade. Uh, again, hitting super power bomb. You have the lucha destroyer. Corey Graves, you must get your destroyers right. The lucha destroyer is when you do the flippy thing. 
into a power bomb. I learned that from Lucha Underground. Because there is a big difference. In this match, you can actually see it. But he kicked out of that because that's not oh, that's not really a finisher. So and there's a super bomb bomb from the top rope. Which was awesome. On Ray and Andrade goes up one nothing. And the great thing about this is that Ray is still selling the effects of that super power bomb. Corey Graves, as the announcer, says, Why would you push yourself through this again? Just give up. Because, again, uh, very quickly after the referee rang the bell for the second fall, for the second time, because the ref does give him a couple of minutes to recover, he got hit with a bounce back, sit out power bomb. So they have to simplify these moves. And again, with this, Rey Mysterio kicked out. This is when Corey Graves made the comments like, just just give up. Again, the heel now says, you, you would tell the face that you just give up. Stop taking the punishment. This is when Ray hit a Canadian destroyer, which is a flippy power bomb, which is a flippy pile driver. So, I don't know. See, I can't do it with my fingers. It's like flippy pile driver versus flippy power bomb. So, one's a Lucia destroyer, that's a flippy power bomb. The Canadian destroyer is, of course, a flippy pile driver. So, he hit the Canadian destroyer, got the one, two, three. We're all tied up one apiece. Amazing! And that's not even the fun stuff. Because, you know what? The spirit of Dusty Rhodes with the Royal Rumble, baby, is going to prevail over SmackDown, sweetheart. Because he is the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. And both these individuals are trying to make the American dream possible. We're going to give this an American dream finish. Because this match is going to be a draw. Nobody wins. I'll get into that. How? And I'll tell you what. This is going to be one of those rare exceptions to kind of my rules of finishes. But this match deserved it. Mainly not only what happened during the match, but what happened after the match. But again, there's more flippy, flippy stuff. Again, Almas is great at countering things. Um, he did get hit by the 619. Um, he did counter, I think early in the match, he countered a uh, Huracrana with a power bomb on the outside. Eventually, Rey Mysterio, they, he does a Huracrana from the inside of the ring to the outside. Um, Rey also hits a, a, a reverse Rana, which is pretty darn cool. I want to say, who started to do that a lot? I want to say was the guys from the Osiris portal in Shakar who started to do that reverse Rana a lot. And they kind of made it famous. And every wrestler just saw, whoa, that looks cool. So, again, a lot of things get copied in processing. I don't think there's any true original moves yet. I mean, everything is either a, it's either a bomb, slam, driver. I think that's it. With the exception of a couple of submission holds. Even they're, they're getting copied and pasted and tweaked a little bit. But that will be for some other video. And I need pictures and, and I, need, I need editing process. I need editing for that. That's just a pile of work. Maybe one day with someone special sitting either there or me there. Wait, it's east, west, south. Yeah, so I'd be there somewhere. Next to house faces. Oh, wait, that's east, so. See, see, somewhere up there, I think. I don't know, I'm getting off track. Again, the reverse run is 619. Then Samoa Joe comes out. He cleans house. 
before that, it's a draw. There is no definitive finish. So that means this is going to continue, which they could do this again every week. And I would be good with that because these two can put on an amazing match and deserve all the time that SmackDown can give them. So they can keep on doing this. Oh, I'd, I'd wager to say another month before I start to downgrade it. Because, again, you're only going to have about... Here, one, two, three, uh, four weeks in February. Yeah, four SmackDowns. One's a go-home show. So, yeah, they could do about three, four weeks of this, and I'd still be happy. And that'd be good, because I haven't seen a good prolonged feud in a while. So Samoa Joe comes out, cleans house. So then he hits the mic. Um, just said, I'm just here to beat up people. Very typical Samoa Joe. But then he hits RK, but out of nowhere. We kind of forgot about Randy Orton until he's, he RKO's Samoa Joe. Again, all this is in the lead up to the Royal Rumble. Samoa Joe's, I'm going to take the title I should have. Drops the mic. Oh, RKO out of nowhere. Because, you know, Randy Orton, he could be he could be in that final four to win the Rumble. I'm trying to think. I have to figure out who's in the Rumble. Our truth isn't winning the Rumble. I don't care if he comes in 30 or, or first. Part of me still hopes Kenny Omega shows up. They might have Kushida come in as a kind of guest appearance. We'll probably have either Gargano or Ciampa show up because Adam Cole, baby, already showed up to one Royal Rumble. Lars Sullivan, unless he's really in the doghouse, will probably show up to the Rumble. And I think that's going to be part of my predictions. It's going to be what surprise entrance. There are, as long as I get more than half right, I'll, I'll give myself some credit for it. Same is true of the woman's. Oh yeah, because oh I forgot the other match. It was it was a, it was a smack. It was a Raw Women's Championship. So yeah, so that makes sense. Seven hours does make sense. You have the two-hour pre-show. Raw Women's, SmackDown Women's, Women's Rumble, Men's Rumble. Men's heavyweight or men's raw, men's SmackDown, and then you're going to have the elimination chamber. It's like something's going to get short, and it better not be the Daniel Bryan AJ Styles match. That would upset me and probably a whole bunch of other fans. I'll get more into that a little bit later. Or Dr. Tom will get into more, more of that later. But Randy Orton shows up. And again, this was a filet match. I mean, even with the outside interference, the outside interference made sense. It prolongs the feud because there was no third pin. There was no third pinfall. So again, with this, I'm actually fine with this, especially as the fact that it's being kind of the build up for the Royal Rumble. These two put on an amazing match. I'm not going to take anything away. Samoa Joe made an appropriate interference, and Randy Orton just took out Samoa Joe. So I guess Randy Orton might be in the final four, but he's the one standing tall, so he's not winning. So I'll also, also to confer with Dr. Tom about what's going to happen there. But again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Thank you very much, YouTube people. Um, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, I'll probably be putting this up probably tomorrow morning and get some sleep. And I need to take maybe just part of one or something. Figure something out. Again, thank you everyone for watching. And please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And look forward to a lot more live stuff.
coming in on the following, coming on the next couple of weeks. Because I know, again, it's either a midget wrestling, hopefully the 9th of February. The WWE is coming back to town in February, I think the 24th. So, again, I do want to see that match. That'd be fun. I'm going to look that up. Whenever they come to Sanford, they Tony Beach hike to go. Even if they go up to Jacksonville, I might go to that. Or even, yeah, Jacksonville is probably better. They have the armory there. I have to figure out what the armory is, though. Ask. Oh, I'm making too many, too many plans ahead of time. I'd like to thank everyone, though, for being part of, for putting me in their plans. Um, have a good night, everyone. Bye.